baby ET phone home. I got my Pluto shirt. I got my space goggles, my tactical headphones, and it's time to deep dive into this thing called EXO. It's been so long, baby. Light years away, and it's finally at our fingertips, babies. It's finally here. Let's review EXO by Muddy Funster, a.k.a. Lewis Hill, a.k.a. Your Daddy, on the Atari 700 Pro System. Hola, childs. It's time for Funkmaster V's. Getting hip with the Atari 7800, where Funkmaster V, musician, ghost hunter, hat flipper, pro wrestler, and comedian takes you on a tour of all things cool about the Atari 7800. Are you ready to get your groove on? Because it's about to get funky up in here. Before we start the review, I just want to say that Muddy Funster gave me uh, an advanced copy of EXO this morning, and you're going to be able to see gameplay footage that's never been released before on the interwebs, and I want to thank Muddy for that opportunity. Also, check out my own board he put in the game called Funk's Burrow, which is cool, but where's the disco ball and the bass guitars and the half-naked women? Come on, man. So it's Sunday morning today, and this knucklehead across the transatlantic sent me a message that he's finally got me an EXO ROM for review. And I'm sitting there rubbing my eyes, kind of, who is this? What? And it took me a minute to realize it's EXO. Now, if you know my website, Atari7800Forever.com, or if you've been watching my re video reviews, on YouTube, you realize I don't really do games that aren't released on physical cart. I'm old school. I'm high touch, not high tech. But I'm going to throw Muddy a bone. They've been having a hard time getting EXO and cramming it into a cartridge because it's such a big, marvelous feat that they're having trouble with the audio. This game is about the size of Ricky and Vicky, but it's vastly different in a lot of ways. I would dare say Probably the audio is the strongest point on each of those games. The songs on both Ricky and Vicky and EXO are amazing. What is this game? At the bare bones minimum, you take all the glitz and the glam and all the little uh, the icing and the cherry on top. This is another single screen adventure type game. It's very similar to what's been released a lot by these hobby programmers recently. You know, Night Guy, Slide Boy, Uzi de Goo, uh, Hardy Man Slapper, uh, Dragon's Descent. The single screen adventure type where you clear off one board to get to the next and it's a maze type situation. I have no problem with those. I love them. They're all rated highly by me because I enjoy those quite a bit. Now, when you start adding the accoutrements on top, that's what kind of sets EXO apart. Uh, Gameplay-wise, there's kind of a Gravatar gimmick with this, too. It's not as severe and as difficult to control as uh, Gravatar, but there is a, gra you know, you kind of push up to go up, and then you let off the controls for it to descend. And that can be tricky, but that's kind of the charm and the gameplay of what we got going on here. It looks like a shooter, but it's not really a shooter, even though you do have lasers and missiles to take out uh, kind of obstacles and, 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 and bigger things to blow up. In fact, this game is one part shooter and nine parts hmm, finagler. Is, is that a term we can use? Because I wouldn't dare say this is a puzzle uh, adventure game, but there are different uh, paths you have to figure out and you have to kind of see what the patterns of the obstacles are to get through them and it can be very tantalizing in fact uh, the people that wouldn't like this game are people who like shoot 'em ups they want to fly blow things up fast EXO looks like a sports car and it's got the big ass wheels and all the big booty ladies are leaning in going who's driving this thing but you know, top speed's like 40 miles per hour. That's like uh, 60 kilometers per hour there, buddy. So this game's all about uh, story, you know? Like there's four worlds uh, that you get to go to. Um, the first three, you can go to any one of those three uh, to save your crewmates. And they each have a unique look and they each have a name. And then once you clear those off, you get to go to the fourth one. And there's a big story going on here. In fact, all the way from Great Britain 
Muddy has sent uh, a little bit about what this game is about. And so we'll, we'll read it. How you doing there, fool? There's a, someone got RT and crumpets, and we're going to go fight them in outer space. What do you think about that? Oh, I don't know. I feel so alone out here. Do you think the United States can help? I'm just kidding. He didn't. He said he was going to send it to me, and he didn't. But there is a long story uh, that that eventually we'll all get to, to read and, and see and, and, and get more immersed into it. And I think the cool thing about this game is there's so many accoutrements and nice little touches that you are immersed into this world. It's not just like, okay, I'm playing this goofy thing here. It's like, ooh, I'm invested, you know. So this game looks totally original, but Muddy did uh, admit that a lot of the uh, inspirado, as Tenacious D would call it, uh, came from a game called Cybernoid, which is a computer game. And if you go look up gameplay, or if you have an emulator and you want to check out Cybernoid, it looks a lot like EXO, and especially the early EXO builds. And he's changed the graphics over the years as he's, he's, he's progressing this game. But uh, Cybernoid is much more of a shooter than this game is. And Cybernoid also is uh, difficult. It's terrible how hard that game is. And if you do try to check it out, I do think the Amiga version is best. Uh, I prefer this game because it's, again, it's 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 more of a thinking man's game than it is big giant balls in outer space flying around and doing kickflips off the walls. Even though this is a maze shooter adventure, it gets easier a little bit and less overwhelming once you realize there's really only two or three things you've got to do to clear each world. First, you got to find a generator. Once you find the generator, you blow it up with your missiles and it starts to flicker the electricity. There's a lot of electric gates in this game that block your progression through certain areas. And then you're able to kind of get through those areas and get into new spaces. Then you gotta find the key card. Once you find the key card, you pick that up in your ship and you're able to exit. And once you exit, you can take on the boss. That's when the shooter part of the game comes in. Now, if you really, really, really wanna beat the game, you've gotta find the artifacts. The artifacts are found by flipping switches. There are a bunch of hidden switches, I think maybe three or four per level. And once you flip the final switch and it triggers where the artifact can be found, the screen shakes and there's this kind of loud noise that lets you know, okay, now I know the artifact is uh, open up for me to find it. You gotta go through the maze again to see kind of like a big hole in the wall. You go in there, pick up the artifact and bada boom. Once you collect all four artifacts, you, have unlocked the fifth world. Now, if you beat the game and don't get all the artifacts, you get a sad ending where everybody gets testicular cancer and their balls fall off. We don't want that. Something, I, I don't know, I didn't do that. But uh, if you find all the artifacts, you can go to the fifth world and the fifth world has the big daddy boss. You gotta go blow his face up. There's a lot to this game, but really, if you break it down and you get your mind right about it, it's, it's pretty simple. I think it is worth saying that the sound is probably the best part, even though the sound effects are really underwhelming. The sound effects kind of suck, to be honest. It's the music, and also if you have an Atari Vox, each boss has a bunch of different phrases, and Muddy says, since I'm a pro wrestler, I'm gonna love it because there's a lot of trash talk, and I don't have a physical cart to play with the Audio Vox yet, but I can't wait to hear these guys and what they sound like. Visually, it's comparable to Ricky and Vicky. I know Ricky and Vicky have bigger sprites and there's a lot of cartoonish stuff going on, but if you really look at it, Ricky and Vicky is very simple with its color schemes. There's, there's only a couple colors per board. This EXO, even though the sprites are smaller and things are a little bit more rudimentary, the colors explode on this game. They're really cool to see. In each world, there's five of them. You know, there's kind of like an underground uh, world that's, that looks like, uh, you know, Indiana Jones or maybe even Artie. Uh, you know, there's one that's a lava world. There's one that's a super technical world. So there's a lot of neat stuff to see. If I got a nitpick EXO, I would say a lot of people may be thrown off by how slow and plotting it is. Um, that's not me. It's a thinking man's kind of game. But it's like fail safe in that way. You know, it's not very fast. 
I'm not a big fan of the uh, how the missiles shoot. You push up and the missiles will curve like this. And if you're dropping or you're staying still, the missiles will curve like that. It's not a huge deal, but when you're in the boss battles, I do not like that at all. I would say probably the worst part about this game are the boss battles. They're extremely difficult uh, and they're not very great looking. They're not bad. Uh, they're better than most, um, but in a weird twist, like the final boss is by far the easiest, um, which I'm grateful for, but it's still kind of an odd tick. Um, nothing bad, you know, and, and you do get monologuing with, with the first four bosses, which is interesting. Besides the second boss, I thought most of them were kind of lame. Muddy created for me a special review copy, and today... I was able to defeat the whole game and clear everything. Now, he gave me a copy that has 69 lives because he's also 12 years old, uh, but he also knows I suck at this game and I needed it. Uh, another uh, bag of positives would have to be all of the extras. Um, there is a CD laying at your base, and if you go over there and click it, it brings up this old like car stereo uh, basically jukebox and you can change the the <laughs> the led light or the illumination like an old 90s car which is pretty cool there's cinematics you can go look at the intro uh of each world which is really cool or the hero story once you defeat each level there's easter eggs galore one of them is you hit a light switch so many times something happens i swear to god i spent 10 minutes doing that today and Unless a hand comes out of the screen and starts juggling my jibs, I, I don't know if I care to keep doing that, but uh, you can if you got the time to keep hitting the on and off button. So what do we rate this thing? I'm kind of teetering between two numbers. And if I sit down and think about how good the sound is, how colorful the game is, how lush and, and detailed the worlds are, um, the dialogue between the characters, the ending of the game, all the accoutrements, Easter eggs, love, time, care, details. Uh, I think that supersedes maybe the slowness of the gameplay, if you're someone who's irritated by that, and the lackluster boss fights. I'm going to give this game tepidly, but I'm going to give it to it anyway, a five out of five. It's a perfect score. I think Muddy did enough with all the extras and the accoutrements to send this over the top. Um, rarely, besides maybe Ricky and Vicky, has there been a game that had characters that you actually care about on the Atari 7800 and uh, a, a storyline that you're that invested in. And it, he's coming out with like a, no, uh, he called it a novella. And uh, so we can even dive deeper into the world of EXO. And who knows if you're good boys and girls and you say your prayers to the good Lord upstairs and you brush your teeth and eat your vitamins uh, and start doing push-ups at night and uh, combating uh, local crime with a local group of teenagers armed with sticks and chains, you may get a sequel. So EXO... Uh, by Muddy Funster is going to be uh, released very soon on ROM and hopefully at AtariH.com on a physical cart. We're pulling for it. And uh, yeah, if you like the Atari 7800, this is another game you just got to get or you don't have a complete uh, library, in my opinion. And my opinion is sacrosanct. Muddy, everybody else that helped in this game, Bobby Clark and all the testers, Trevor and crossbow and everybody else that helped out you can look at the credits there's even a credits package you guys did a great job pat yourselves on the back and everybody who's an atari 7800 fan thanks you for this game